All right, in this video, we're going to look at a problem that uses the x is small approximation, which is a way that we can um, avoid solving a quadratic equation. So here's a problem from Sapling. And it says, here's an equation. Here's the value of our equilibrium constant. If a 3.3 molar sample of A is heated at some temperature, what is the concentration of B at equilibrium? So we're given an initial concentration, and we're trying to find an equilibrium concentration. So this one's just like what we were working on in the last one, where we had to solve the quadratic. Um, so let's see here how it's different, and how we can tell when and if it's going to be different. So we have A going to 2B, and that equals 5.62. times 10 to the minus 6. This is A goes to 2B. All right, let's just double check this one more time. All right, so <clears throat> A and B are both aqueous. So they're not solids, they're not liquids. That means that they both appear in the equilibrium expression. So we'll put together the equilibrium expression with both of these terms in there. And we have an initial concentration of 3.3. Now, it says that this is at 500K, and it tells us a temperature, 500K. What do we do with that temperature? Why does it even tell us that? The reason it tells us a temperature is because when I change the temperature of a reaction at equilibrium, the reaction changes. Those equilibrium positions change. So changing the temperature changes the value of the equilibrium constant. So this is only, this is only the value for this equation if this equation is run at 500k. If this reaction right here is run at a different temperature, it has a different equilibrium constant. So even though the temperature is important because the, at different temperatures will have different constants, we don't have to do anything with that temperature right now to solve this problem. They're just telling us that this is only true at this temperature. So let's ignore that. And the initial concentration is 3.3 molar. All right, so we'll make our ice table here. Have a pretty simple equation. Um, start with zero of zero product. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we start with zero, I don't really have to calculate Q. Because if I start with zero, I know that the reaction is going to go forward because I can't have zero here at equilibrium. I have to have a little bit at least. So the reaction will go this way. So if it's going to go that way, then I'm going to lose some of A and I'm going to gain some of x, and I'm going to gain 2 of whatever that something is, because this is a 1 to 2 ratio. So at equilibrium, I have 3.3 minus x, and 0 plus 2x, which will just simplify to 2x. So let's make our equilibrium expression here, k, c, and remember the c is just saying that that's in concentration, our initial values are concentrations, not pressure. Um, it's just the e, it's just K, E, Q. They're all the same. So this equals products raised to their coefficients over reactants. So B is 2x squared, and A is 3.3 minus x. So, and this is all equal to this equilibrium number. 5.62 times 10 to the minus 6. So when we look at this, it looks like I'm going to have to solve a quadratic. I have an x squared expression up here. I have x expression down here. I'm going to put these together. I have an, an expression over here without x. It has all the makings to be a quadratic expression here. But if I can ignore this x right here, then I can simplify this expression so that I'll have x squared. But if I have x squared by itself, then I just have to take the square root to solve for x. If I have x squared and x in the same expression, that's when I need a quadratic. But if there's some way that I can ignore this down here, then I can skip the quadratic. So I can never ignore an x when it's being multiplied by something. If I have an x and it's multiplied by something, then I can't ignore that. But I can ignore x down here sometimes. 
and the sometimes is if it's really, really, really small. So what does that mean? That means that if I'm looking at this expression, let's say that x is equal to 1. Then I'd have 2 times 1 squared over 3.3 minus 1. So in that case, I would get uh, 2 times 1. I guess I'm going to do the parentheses right here. 2 squared is 4. 3.3 minus 1 is 2.3. So I get 4 divided by 2.3. 1.739, whatever that value is. Now, if x is really small, let's imagine that x is really, really small here. Okay, so let's look at this expression up here and let's see what happens when x is either big or x is small. So let's imagine that x is 1. So what does that equal over here? Well, 2x squared times 2, if this is equal to 1, then that's going to be 2 times 1 squared equals 4. And I guess we can just evaluate, let's just evaluate these separately. It doesn't even have to be a fraction. If, the, if x is 1, then 3.3 .3 minus 1 equals 2.3. If x is 0 0.01, then this expression, 2x squared, it's going to be 0 0.01 times 2 squared. So now this is 2 times 0 0.01 squared, 0 0.0004. And here I have 3.3 3 minus 0 0.01. Oops, I said. Equals 3.3 minus 0 0.01 equals 3.29. So when x is a really, really small number, then 3.3 3 is just about equal to 3.29. Right? When x is really, really small compared to this number, then what I'm doing is I'm taking a small number and I'm subtracting it from a pretty big number. So if we could even take this to an extreme and say that this is, if x is 0 0.00000000001, then 3.3 .3 minus x is 3.299999999999. And 3.299999999 is pretty much the same as 3.3. Right? Those are pretty much the same number. So if x is a really small number relative to this number, then if I ignore it, then I'm just going to, I'll be either have this or I'll have this. And that's not going to change my math very much if ignoring that x. Right? Now let's look at if x is a big number. If x is a big number relative to this, then I have 3.3 and 2.3. And 3.3 .3 and 2.3 are definitely not the same number, right? If I try to ignore this x and x is big, then I have 3.3 .3 minus 1, which is 2.3. And 3.3 .3 and 2.3 are definitely different numbers. They are not nearly as similar as 3.3 .3 and 3.29. So now let's look at these values where I multiply. So when if I'm multiplying by if I'm multiplying by a big number, 
then that number is going to get bigger, right? Especially if I'm then squaring it. If I'm multiplying by a small number, then that number is going to get smaller. So these, when I'm multiplying by a big or a small number, that has a big effect on the value of this term. But if I'm subtracting a really small number from a number that's really big, then I can, then it's, then ignoring x is not going to affect the value very much here. Ignoring x up here would change this from a 4 to a 0 .0004. That's a, a difference of 10,000, right, or 100,000. That's a huge difference by if I were to ignore x and just say, well, this is just 4. If I just get rid of this x and call it 1. So this is a really long way to explain that it's sometimes it's OK for me to ignore x. And in this case, if I get rid of this x right here, draw an x through it, <laughs> if I get rid of this x right here, it's not going to change the value of this term very much if x is really, really, really small. So is x really, really small? Well, I don't know because I haven't done the quadratic equation yet to figure it out, right? So this whole problem, this whole strategy rests on you guessing whether x is big or small. And we can't know what x is until we run through the problem, right? Well, there's a way to figure it out. Because remember, what does x tell us? x tells us how far does this have to move to reach equilibrium. Well, what does k tell us? k tells us, do I have more reactant or more product at equilibrium? So if this is a big initial amount of reactant, and k is a really small number, which means that I have more reactant at equilibrium than product, then I can compare the amount of reactant I have to the value of k to determine, is x going to be big or small? So let's do that mathematically. This has to be x must be 5% of the initial concentration of reactant or less. So what does that mean here? Let's do 3.3 .3 times 5% equals 0 0.165. So that means that x must be smaller than 0 0.165, or I can't ignore it. If x is less than 5% of this, of my initial concentration of reactant, then it's OK for me to ignore it. Well, again, how do I know what x is going to be until I solve for the quadratic? Well, I can guess what x is going to be if I look at the ratio of reactant initial reactant divided by the equilibrium constant. If this is greater than or equal to 400, if, then x will be less than 5% times reactant. All right. So I know this is a lot of a lot of math. Let's it's it's easier than it sounds. Let's plug these numbers in. So if the react the initial concentration of reactant divided by the equilibrium constant is equal to four hundred or more, then we can ignore X. So let's apply that. Initial reactant is 3.3. .3. And the initial, or my KC, is 5.62 times 10 to the minus 6. So what does that equal? 
equals 3.3 .3 divided by 5.62 EE minus 6. Science of notation. That equals 5.87 times 10 to the fifth, which is much, 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 much larger than 400. So what that means is that this is a really big number. 3.3, .3, as far as concentration goes, if it's one molar or bigger, that's big. So three is big. That's a big initial concentration. The, co the equilibrium constant, 5.62 times 10 to the minus 6, with a coefficient of 10 to the minus 6, or an exponent of 10 to the minus 6, that makes this number very, very, very small. It's 0.00000562. So anytime this number is really small, like let's say 10 to the minus 3 or smaller, and this number is pretty big, like let's say 1 or bigger, then this x will be less than 5%. So you can ignore it in these expressions. If you want a more mathematical way to figure it out than just say this is big and this is small, then you can use this ratio here. If the initial concentration divided by k is 400 or greater, then x will be less than 5%. So let's run through this now, applying that assumption, and let's solve this using the small x is small approximation. So x is small, we're going to ignore it. But we can only ignore it when I'm subtracting it or adding it. I can't ignore it when I'm multiplying it. So that's 2 times, oh, I'm trying, that's right, I'm going to solve for x. 2x squared, just solve that, 2x squared is 4x squared divided by 3.3, .3, and I'm going to ignore that x, so now this equals 5.62 times 10 to the minus 6. So you see how much easier this equation becomes when I ignore that x. Now I just have to multiply this 5.62 EE minus 6 times 3.3. .3. Did I do that right? 5.62 EE minus 6 times 3.3 um, divided by 4. All right, so we'll multiply both sides by 3.3. .3. And then we get 4x squared equals. 4.6, I think, 5.62 EE minus 6 times 3.3. Okay, I had that number wrong, sorry. Equals 1.85. Five times 10 to the negative fifth. And then we'll divide both sides by 4. Oops. Get rid of that. And take the square root of both sides because this is x squared. And we'll solve for x. Divide it by 4, square root. So x equals 2.1533 times 10 to the minus third. OK, so is x less than 5% of this? Did, were we? okay, we're, was our assumption okay um, in that it's less than 5% of what we started with? Well, this divided by 3.3 .3 times 100 is 0.06%. Yes, so x is 0.06% of the initial concentration of reactant. So x is very, very small, much less than this. So ignoring it is fine, because 3.3 .3 minus x 
is equal to just about 3.3. So ignoring x here did not change the value of my equilibrium. All it did was simplify the math.